Hello. I can't find anything wrong down here. Everything's fine. Well, I suggest you keep on looking. I'm not sure there's any point. I don't want to have to remind you about the last time. Now that wasn't my fault. Yeah, so you said. All right, I'll try again. That's most obliging of you, Mr. Dickens. Thank you for your diligence. Goodbye. Men prevaricate more than women. Mm hmm? That's what it says here. Extraordinary. They find it harder to make decisions affecting key events in their lives. Who says who exactly? Says somebody clever. Some reader in logical positivism angling for a Channel 4 series and writing for The Guardian. Probably someone I know. Who wrote it? Katie Green. Katie Green? Doctor Katie Green. She was in my tutorial group, 1970-something. Nice Katie Green. This is extraordinary. It's quite unsettling. You have nothing to say. What did you expect? What did I expect? Not this. Why not? Why not? Yes, why not? Let me think. On the whole, if I understand correctly, as a rule, people do not expect to wake up one morning and find that their house has set out to sea. You put a fulminator. We've become unhinged. I detect colonial malpractice. I mean, if I express myself in terms of my emotional response to something bewildering or disturbing, does everybody, anybody, sit there and think, my God, listen to him, will that selfish twat ever shut the fuck up? So, this Katie Green... Dr. Katie Green. This so-called expert in men's shortcomings? Just a girl. Did you tell her that? What? That she was just a girl? Probably not, Anne. I can't remember. We were at Oxford. It was a very hot summer. We were young and clever. It didn't have to mean anything. She was just a girl. She turned the pages of magazines and listened to Kate Bush. I doubt I ever loved her. Hello, Katie. I'm sorry. You're his wife? Yes. There's no telling where we're headed now. It's not good. It's not good. Is there need of easement, Colonel Gardner? Not now, Maud. At first, I thought he was quite interesting, you know? But it turns out he was actually a bit of a twat. I wish I knew what to say. Excuse me. Is there cause for concern, Colonel Barker? Do you not sense, more that something is not correct, not wholesome? I don't really care. Nor my strong suit, caring. No. Polenta! <sighs> what? Be a darling for Daddy. What? Go and fetch Dr. Polanski. And hurry, please, it's important. Who? Dr. Polanski. She lives 
I don't know, down there somewhere. Down where? Down below, somewhere beneath the building. You want me to go all the way down there? It's miles away. Yes, Polenta, please. Oh, there were promises. A second-hand car, two weeks away in Eastbourne once a year. Two weeks? Um, I'm sorry. Once a year. So I waited. And I waited. Yes, I'm sure. I just thought, I mean, he was nice enough. A bit inhibited. You know, sorry. Yes. Go on. And smug, I suppose. Oh dear. Look at him now. They're both complete freaks. Sometimes I wake all morning, I do nothing. I just sit in the kitchen. God knows what's wrong with them. I'm a hard daddy, Polenta. Year's charts, as it were, are a little behind on the details. So, um, who are you? Uh, I was David's girlfriend for a while, a long time ago. I see. And uh, you must be the wife. Well, there we are then. Fabulous. So, enlighten me, sir. Why have I been brought here? I have no idea. No idea. No idea. I find that very unhelpful. It's evasive and obstructive. In general, I'm content with my place in this happy community of fugitives and zealots, but I'm not given kindly to running a fool's errand, sir. It makes my job a little difficult. This was not my idea. I haven't a clue what your business is here. And frankly, I don't give a fuck what you think. Oh, fabulous, sir. Outstanding. Nonetheless, your house is at sea, and it's causing unnecessary distraction. Men prevaricate more than women. And they resist accepting responsibility for the consequences. It says so here. Utter nonsense. Gender stereotyping of the most pernicious kind. Frankly, I'm surprised at you, Katie. I had no idea that The Guardian would turn out to be the Daily Mail for prissy Radio 4 types with a broom handle up their arse. That does sound like me. Did I write that? Either you have or you will. It's hard to tell which. Very nice cup of tea. Oh, good. I don't think he resented me being clever. It excited him. Go on. But anything I talked about that didn't include him. Did you get the second hand car? No. I wanted to travel. He wanted the dreaming spires. And 
in the end I walked away. Well, here we all are. Unaccountably an old flame, my wife of however long, some sort of teenage domestic maid, a peculiar person from below ground, and upstairs listening in, a retired nightclub entertainer of indeterminate gender and his Amazon sex slave. Oh, for God's sake. What? This isn't about you, though, is it? This is an objective concern. It's an issue of cause and effect. I don't know what you're talking about. Most enchanting. Yep, I see. Thank you. So, what did you do? I took six months off, went travelling. There was a full solar eclipse that summer. I wanted to see it from the highest point I could reach. I went to Chile, uh, met some people, and all four of us went up into the mountains. It was a bandit country and we needed an escort. So, we hired four local men with jeeps and guns to take us up above Valparaiso, near the border with Argentina. Yeah, a bit like a bowl. And when the moon moved across the sun, the sky came down over the earth, like, like a lid over the bowl. Till all you could see was this thin line of purple light around the Earth's room. It's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And David, what did he do? He stayed in Oxford. I've got no idea what he did. does sound wonderful, Katie. A really extraordinary thing to do, but to be frank, of little or no interest to me. I'm sorry. If that makes me a zealot, then so be it. What, Anne? What did you want me to say? You never felt, even for a moment, that this was an opportunity to live a little? I don't know. You don't know. Oh, for God's sake, David, just say it. I regret that I disappointed you, Katie. It was selfish and insensitive. And... It doesn't matter, David. Well, this is all very amusing, but I have a light fish supper, a glass of beer, and a VHS video cassette of a renowned action movie starring Sir Roger Moore in my humble accommodation below. Have a good day, sir. Thank you for the tea, miss. Oh, I'm coming too. Ladies.
Yes, Maud, I did believe I was destined for greatness. Concert halls and the like. With a little more luck and motivation, I might have amused royalty. <sighs> Though I did once entertain royalty, in fact. In Berlin in 1973, a certain prince and his ex-stormtrooper cronies. Not that one necessarily associates royalty with leather jackets and cigarettes and half caste women dancing in their underwear. But I suspect that the principle of discretion when dealing with the nobility plays its part in that. Let it go. It was a lifetime ago. Robust advice, Maud. Best forgotten. Feels like September. I don't like September. Anything in the paper? Not really. Want to go out? Afternoon stroll? Yes. Fine day. Good. The day seems much longer now, and the seeds that time has sown. Spring to my mind as reality unwinds And all that's been is known And what can the outcome be? Oh, calamity, oh, catastrophe A dire visuality For the man who is all at sea Of the spray and spume and foam, some tightening here, some loosening there, the tide has turned for home. So look at the outcome, see, no calamity, no catastrophe, no dire eventuality for the man who was born.